Welcome to Tea with Tosh. I'm Tosh Berman, and this is our guest, George Herms. Hello, Mr. Herms. How are you, Tosh? And Mr. Herms is uh, an artist, uh, uh, does performance, performance artist, I believe. Would you, would you I've been called a lot that? of things. That's one of them, one. yes. Uh -huh. And it's sort of like a street hoodlum sometimes, too? No, I've never been called a street hoodlum. When I hung out with you, I was accused of that. Oh, I see. Well, I heard rumors about you being a street hoodlum. Well, I have a quote. I want to read you a quote. This is a quote <laughs> from you. All right. Quote. And this is from um, an essay you wrote called Out of Context. Quote, my own birth as an artist, I place in Hermosa Beach. What happened in Hermosa Beach? That, uh, what is it about Hermosa uh, Beach that, that, that you became the an artist? Wave, the waves come in at Hermosa Beach, and they leave a lot of things on the beach, uh -huh. which I picked up and started making into little still lifes. Uh -huh. and uh, giving them to people as birthday presents, wedding presents, occasional verse in uh, plastic mode. Mm -hmm. And uh, I eventually those pieces ended up in museums and galleries and it became known as art, but they were works of love, labors of love. And that started in Hermosa Beach. So what, what happened before the sea? Where, where we before these things were in the sea, they were uh -huh. used for practical purposes. Uh -huh. And I'm only interested in them after they've had a rich, full life. Uh -huh. And this is the joy of working with found objects, is that uh -huh. they already have uh, associations. And uh, I take them and try to push them into a new arena uh -huh. where they fight it out with things called paintings and sculptures, uh -huh. other, other traditional modes. Well, okay, well, you're, you're called assemblage artist. Now, what, what does the exact term assemblage mean? Exactly. Well, there's, there's, there's such a thing as an assemblage of fools. It only takes two people, Tosh. It's like a ship of fools. That's We're right. We're sort of with the most of the beach the sea. That's right. Anytime you put together things yeah. uh, that you're assembling. Uh -huh. In fact, uh, the artist in San Francisco, Jask, called his things assemblies uh -huh. before the word assemblage sort of took over. Uh, it's some, sometimes called mixed media, which I don't like because you could be drawing, painting, working with oils, uh -huh. pastels, egg tempera. That, that to me is mixing of media. Uh -huh. uh, but the assemblage that I'm interested in is uh, nothing more than urban beach combing. It's the kind of thing that every boy, when you reach in your pocket, you've got this a little assemblage of objects that have uh -huh. special poetic meaning to that individual. To stick it out in the world and say this is art—that's another story. Well, how do you choose? Well, how 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 does one find like an object? I mean, like for a piece. I mean, how do you? Is there like a, there's no object store besides the beach? Well, there there used to be things called thrift stores uh -huh. that a lot of people frequented. But maybe they still do. Uh, in my case, something just sort of has to jump into my eyeball uh -huh. you know, as I walk down my path in life, and with. Um, I don't know what it is. I mean, that, you know, certain things trigger off what I'm in love with. Uh -huh. You know, and then in this, most of the time it's rusty, it's weathered, it's faded, it's stained. It's something that's you know, so it's sort of eaten. It life has has worked it over. Um, it's like you, Tosh. I could sense you would be a perfect object in one of my assemblages. Well, I've been eaten many times. Yes. Well, this is the. The joy of is in the discovery mm -hmm. of, of this. Now, what happens after you do this kind of art for 20 or 30 years mm -hmm. is that people begin to uh, bring you gifts. They're driving along the road and they see this pile of crap, and I thought about <laughs> you. <laughs> and so they come to you with uh -huh. this object, which you then have to accept, oh, thank you very much, because you opened their eyes uh -huh. to the stuff that was just being discarded. Mm -hmm. uh, and the only way I've been able to deal with that, I mean, the joy of discovery is what it's about. So what I do is I hide these things from myself in mm -hmm. piles for years, and then one day I'm tripping along through this pile and I come across it, and then it becomes uh, raw materials for the work. Hmm. So, okay, this is sort of like a real basic question, but like, what's, what's, like you wake up, okay, like, like say like 24 hours in the life of an artist, mm -hmm. you know, quote unquote, okay, you wake up in the morning, right? Yeah. Then what? Then well, what I have a hard on. I mean, you know, it's like a typical morning with, in my case, uh, I'm sleeping with a 20-month-old boy named Wilder uh -huh. because he gets up at the crack of dawn. I fix him a bottle. I try to get an extra, uh -huh. you know, hour or two of sleep. This is gonna be good for like artists with sons or daughters. It's good advice to get. Yeah, that, that's right. Mm -hmm. uh, to get that little extra sleep. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the beautiful wife Galen is able to sleep in a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, then Wilder finally pounds on me enough until I get up, and uh, we squeeze orange juice. Okay. Okay, and make eggs uh -huh. and breakfast, and uh, then. 
You guys eat the same breakfast? Or is pretty, it like much pretty much so, yeah. It's, it's like, like eggs. Sometimes we can chop some ham into it, you uh -huh. know, but mostly it's scrambled eggs. Uh -huh. But you're, not a, you're, not a, you're not a vegetarian? Or uh, a my life, I have had to take everything that comes my way. Yeah, I, I haven't been able to have mm -hmm. this. Um, and so then there's, there's breakfast, there's the washing of the dishes, right, mm -hmm. which is my job. Uh, Galen takes care of the clothes being clean and the cooking the meal. So I'm washing dishes, mm -hmm. changing diapers, doing the morning shift and the evening shift with the baby. Okay. And then in the daytime, what I do is I drive from the bungalow uh -huh. in Venice to Skid Row, where I go into my studio up on the third floor. Uh -huh. uh, this is only the last few days. Yeah. It's a new situation. Um, and begin to put things together. Uh, and then it's usually time to uh, focus on whatever the current project is, for instance, a public artwork in MacArthur Park. Mm -hmm. So after a certain amount of time in the studio, then I'm off to MacArthur Park to begin to feel what's going to go up in this particular rose garden. That's my section to uh, do a piece in. Do you often nap at that park? Uh, no, I don't. I've never taken a nap at the park. I take a nap at the studio. Uh -huh. That's a, a major portion of my day. So do you have a little bunk, like a little bunk bed? It's a cot. It's a cot, yeah, with the canvas across it. You know, how the painters are always working on canvas, so yeah. I have this little canvas cot uh -huh. that I stretch out on. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the visions go in, and in one eye and out uh -huh. the other. Um, but so in terms of like finding the things, that's really a chance thing. In other words, uh, I'll show you some slides a little later of mm -hmm. some work. And you'll see a barbecue that comes from an alley behind a Mexican restaurant mm -hmm. that we all go to usually once a week or something. And Wilder doesn't like to sit in the restaurant in the high chair. He doesn't like to be confined. So he's out in the alley. And I'm walking with him. And we find something, you know, which then mm -hmm. becomes part of the work. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a time when it was a very dedicated searching thing uh, where I would get up at dawn and take a bamboo flute and go to a dump and look for things and then take them home. And that would be the day's Mm -hmm. uh, work that I would work with. But now I'm, I have such a backlog of raw material and unfinished works because I start a new work every day. Mm -hmm. and I only finish works when it's time for an exhibition. Mm -hmm. Is that sort of like a clue to finish a piece of work? Well, to me, it's when I put, I have a, a little <coughs> a love stamp, uh -huh. which m when I, I finish, I'll show you what I mean. Okay, okay please, please uh, do. A piece, uh, the book I'm reading mm -hmm. right now is called Over the Teacups which I thought was very well, fitting appropriate. Yeah, <laughs> for your show. Um, I'm not done with it, so you can't have okay, it. Okay, No, not yet. Okay. It's Oliver Wendell Holmes. Is, wait, isn't he, the, uh, wasn't he a judge? Yeah, Supreme Court Justice and a writer. And this is the cover for it, oh. over, the, over the teacups. Uh, and this is what I'm doing to it. Oh, make the camera make get a close-up of that. I don't know. And is it possible? Well, perhaps not. Okay, so. All right, so this needs uh, to be completed. This is a birthday present uh -huh. for a friend of ours, Bob Alexander. Uh -huh. um, and so over the teacups, this will now need, in order to be completed, I have to put my love stamp on it. Uh -huh. May I move your teacup? Oh, please, please uh, do. Please. It's excellent tea, by the way. Is this uh, Corte Madera Creek, 1960? Damn, I think it was uh, 63. Mm. I'm not sure. <coughs> Yeah, 63, yeah. Yeah, no, that's, that's it yeah. is. It's very good time. Yeah, I made, uh, I have like a, I have somebody at home who blends it together. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's a treat to have a tea. Ta-da. <laughs> yeah. As in the Culver City Meat Company, have you ever seen their trucks? They say, you can't, no. you can't beat our meat. <laughs> um, so anyway, to complete something, uh -huh. this isn't the original love stamp. The original love stamp, when I was in Rome for uh -huh. a year, I took a trip and uh, somebody broke into the car and took the original love stamp. Oh. So this is an Italian version. Oh, great. They're just little things. Uh -huh. the, uh, you know, regular rubber stamp thing. And what, um, what I do, this is, in, the, in oriental painting you have a seal. Yeah. Every artist has uh -huh. a seal that they put when they complete uh -huh. something. And this, this love stamp for me is what I complete a work with. So I put the L. I mean, you can figure that that's out of that's, that's, that's definitely, definitely an L. Definitely an L. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And you have to take my word for and, it. Out right. There. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well. Okay. There's there's a one L. There's one L. One O. One O. Uh huh. And then sometimes they're not in the proper order, so we jump ahead to the E. Is that all right? Well. Okay. L O E. Okay. Wait. Wait. But, the, but wait a second, George. The E's like backwards, I think. Yeah, that, uh, that takes a... What is a that? What, why is it? Well, it's a PhD dissertation, but I can give it to you in a capsule. 
uh, in Hermosa Beach, okay? Oh, I was going back when, to the beach. Yeah, back then, to the okay. original. There was like a little lamp that I had. Yeah. It had a doll's head that had holes in it mm -hmm. and light came out of it and had uh, many of the early things, like a little poem and stuff in it. And it had the word love, ita. Uh -huh. In other words, love is hate spelled backwards. Uh -huh. And I decided that uh, that whole concept could be put forward by just turning the E around on love and making it backwards. A very simple way. Yeah. You put out love, it comes back to you Great. twofold. Give right. us a kiss there, pal. All right. Uh, Give me five. So, all right. Oh. The um, other part of this yeah. is that it's an imperative to uh -huh. me because what I was telling you about the being birthday presents, uh -huh. and this is a birthday present, uh -huh. right? Uh, so these labors of love, I don't want to ever get too whacked out yeah. in this professional career of, uh -huh. quote, artist, uh, that they're not labors of love still. So uh -huh. it's an imperative to myself uh -huh. to say that, okay, do you love this? Okay, if you love it, then it can go out into mm -hmm. the world. Then it's a finished piece, and then it's complete. Okay, let me yeah. see if I can. Is this possible? Can this be possibly shown, I wonder? Are you liking this? Is that possible? Yeah. See the finished product? Now what that is, that's uh -huh. uh, an announcement that Bob Alexander printed Oh, uh, I would say 57, 58. Okay, maybe so who's Bob Alexander? Bob Alexander is a friend of ours uh -huh. uh, who is one of the people that uh, I met in the mid-50s uh -huh. when I didn't knew from nothing about art. Yeah. And I met your father uh -huh. and Bob Alexander, and all uh -huh. of a sudden poetry and art was something that was a viable consideration. I mm -hmm. thought something happened in Paris in the 20s. I didn't even know that it was possible. Uh -huh. You know, as, as a kid grew up in a small town in Northern California. So, uh, and Bob was a printer, mm -hmm. and he's the one that turned me on to printing presses. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there, this is, was for a gallery in San Francisco, the Delexi Gallery, uh -huh. that he started. So this was an announcement, mm -hmm. which has now come full circle. It happened to have been out and gotten wiped out. Mm -hmm. But to me, it's still beautiful. The, these, you know, the colors are the same as in the old master paintings. It's, like, it's almost like a, it's still found. It's like a found object, in a sense. Right. I love. It's a, it's a found object that's almost sort of out of my own wastebasket, uh -huh. which is the other thing. Is uh -huh. Just to put, and this goes back to a Duchampian idea where the geometry book was put out. He had a sister put it out uh -huh. for, with strings and let the weather beat on it uh -huh. uh, while it was fanned out. Uh, that idea that a work of art should have to go through the same elements that we go through. Sort of beaten and whipped. Yeah, and yeah. well, <laughs> <laughs> sunned and uh, tanned Bleached. and, yeah invigorated by uh, snow and rain. Um, is, that, is, that, is that the difference between Southern California art and, and New York art? Uh, no, the, bleach? no I'd, I'd say Wichita. Wichita. Bit, yeah, somewhere in there. <laughs> What'd you say? Which? Yeah, there's no, no, it doesn't matter oh. to me. Uh, you know, New York art and Southern California art, you're getting into some, some geographical uh, nitpicking because I found that there are great artists working everywhere. That's what I thought. Why do they make yeah. a big thing about it? Well, because it sells magazines. Oh, no. you think that, so? It's just like a publication thing. Yeah, the more to divide oh, is to conquer. I see. And this is a Life magazine found that out years ago. Uh -huh. you know, their circulation went up. You never show people getting along. You always show them, you know, antagonism. Well, you think it's bad to get like all the artists either coming to Los Angeles or New York? Maybe they should stay in Wichita, Wichita to do work. Well, should they like drop I, everything? I love to travel, and you do too. So yeah. I mean, why I, you know, I think that's real healthy. One should have a headquarters on the planet somewhere. You know? Okay, main headquarters. Yeah, I think. And then uh -huh. just loop out of that, you know, when you can mm -hmm. to visit and live other places. Mm -hmm. And, you know, California has been good to me. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, according to Marcel Duchamp, mm -hmm. he was more, he was talking that it's, it's wise to be influenced by another medium. For instance, he was influenced by writing instead mm -hmm. of like another artist. Mm -hmm. uh, do you feel that way or? Would you like to explain that, or what, what's your um, feelings about that? I'd like to be influenced by every medium. You know, I don't just like, I guess to specialize in one thing is great. There was a guy uh, in Florida that had, did anything, everything for two hours, mm -hmm. and he switched careers until he was an architect. He made those big bronze things of uh -huh. the soldiers, the, <laughs> the Franklin Roosevelt plaques and uh -huh. stuff. He did those, and then he had a business, and then he had an engineering consulting firm. He would only work for two hours uh -huh. at any one thing. And he thought that was the attention span. And then uh -huh. you, you jump to something else, mm -hmm. usually different. You know? And I, I think that, that works out for me. Two hours is enough time mm -hmm. if you really burn and work hard uh -huh. on something. And then shift to something else. Uh, I see no difference, really, in, the, in uh, getting good at something. The problem is that once you master something, I don't know about you, but I'm, yeah. I'm interested in what I haven't mastered. Uh -huh. 
And so you, you get some, uh -huh. you develop some chops and some techniques, or uh -huh. what I call a technical. And then uh, are you going to just keep doing that because yeah. you're good at it? Uh, yeah. or, or try something that you've never done before? you mentioned that because I don't think the, peop the people out there don't know that I'm not really a host. No, I wasn't like trained for this. Yeah, no. It might seem that way, but I'm not. <laughs> no, I think it's one of those gifts. It's like a, it's the same type of thing. It's sort of like the, the power of the amateur. The, yeah. Well, the amateur comes from love. We're back to that. Yeah, absolutely. You, you do what you love, and sometimes uh -huh. you do it very well. Now, the uh, professionalism, that is a, a certain you know point that, uh -huh. that one has to accept. Are you going to become a professional? Uh, these works of mine, which are called assemblages, see, I feel they have to hang up right on the wall mm -hmm. next to a painting mm -hmm. because they are wall uh, hanging pieces mm -hmm. a lot of them. If they're sculptures, <coughs> they've got to stand right next to a sculpture uh -huh. and have as much going for them uh -huh. as uh, a traditional sculpture. Oh, that's a good question, um, mm -hmm. if I might say so. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, do you feel a piece of art or your artwork mm -hmm. is different, say, like in your studio or like in a gallery? Or like uh, some, you know, a, a buyer, or a patron, or whatever, on their wall, in, their, at, in home. Do you feel that piece changes in, by by uh, by the environment? Uh, let's see. I think pieces change the environment uh -huh. more than they're changed Don't by you? the environment. And I think a good work of art, if it's down on the floor in the back of the closet, uh -huh. is still a good work of art. Uh -huh. uh, there are some pieces that are weak, and they need to have a particular kind of gallery space and an uh -huh. aura around them of sacredness. Uh -huh. Uh, to make people think, oh, this is hot stuff. Um, but, you know, we're in an age where some of the graffiti artists are just, you know, hitting an alley in a wall and putting up a beautiful uh -huh. piece. Uh, and that, to me, is a work of art. You know, uh -huh. Now you take that off and you put that in and have them do it in the gallery, uh, it's, I, it's the same thing. Uh -huh. You know, I don't, I don't, the, the environment changes. But it's, just, it's what we assign value. Uh -huh. See, that's what a lot of the stuff that I'm doing, it has uh -huh. to do with what's valuable and what isn't. Uh -huh. you know, like Ezra Pound's value system, you remember that one, is uh -huh. uh, at the very top, or well, like battleships uh -huh. are not very high. Uh -huh. You know, all these things across the nuclear submarines, they're not very high. Uh -huh. uh, even books aren't that high on the value uh -huh. system. Uh, and Pound thought that the highest wa value system were the ideas that hang us up for centuries. Uh -huh. You know, something that we think about for 2,000 years. Now, that's valuable. Worth, worth more than uh, my fingers right here. That's right. Okay, let's, uh, well, let's okay. go, let's go, let's go to some of your work. Okay. I think that's a good idea at this All point, because right. now I'm sure the citizens out there are interested. Okay, we have some. Wow, that's a beautiful sculpture. Yeah, this is a new direction that I'm taking. This is a 17th century uh, Bernini sculpture of David. It's uh -huh. in the Via Borghese in Rome, and it's an absolutely wonderful piece that uh, as you go around it, and that was his great genius, was this uh, plastic quantity that uh -huh. was in the middle of the room, and it's just it's fanning energy out in all directions. And if you st you, you if you, you were a giant, you couldn't you know stand up to this guy in his little sling. But anyway, that's you know the 17th century, uh -huh. which is my wife's specialty, and so she took me on a tour of all the greats of the 17th century uh -huh. when I was in Rome. So now. We go on to the next slide, which is 1986. This is from the show at L.A. Louvre. This, uh -huh. uh, I don't know how many times you looked up as you drive through the streets and seen that word. Immediate occupation, all, all, all the time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I actually, I've seen it above your forehead, so <laughs> emblazoned there at things. So this, <coughs> this is a box, which, now, now some of these uh -huh. things, because um, there's a little problem with whether or not uh, people are going to pull things off or add things uh -huh. to work because these are real objects. Yeah. And so th there's a certain body of work that's behind glass, in this case plexiglass. Uh -huh. um, and these boxes, uh, there are a series of nine, I call them the post-pneumonia boxes. Mm -hmm. When I had pneumonia, I was so weakened uh, from being a um, month flat on your back, uh -huh. I couldn't even saw uh, through a board. Uh -huh. And so I kept working at this project until I could saw all the boards for one of these boxes. They're about two feet by two feet. Uh -huh. by about eight inches deep. And then I just fill them with the things I love. All right, should we go on the next slide? Yes. Next slide, please. Uh, and this one is called Trudeau. <laughs> and it's um, <laughs> from... Uh, sort of the football the, hero there? Yeah, that guy that, uh -huh. uh, that has the, uh, always is wearing the helmet. Were you commissioned with portraits? I like this better than the drawing of him. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's like a much better. Well, you know, a lot of these things are, you know, they're put together as um, objects that talk to each other, and they uh -huh. say what they want to be with. Uh -huh. um, 
and then later on an image may emerge from them mm -hmm. that becomes the title. I personally would like to have everything be called untitled. Untitled. So that you think about it and what it, what it means to you, uh -huh. and then later on, we're like those billboards that you know they turn and you see a different image, or the yeah. postcard with the bride, and then you turn it at an angle and she's wearing a bikini. Uh -huh. Well, that's the way I think works of art should be, that you have to take it on on a first-hand basis without uh -huh. knowing anything about it. And then if you want, you can find out what the artist called it, his nickname for it, uh, in this case Trudeau, uh, when it was done, you uh -huh. know, any anecdotes or stuff like that. But your first, um, and this is something that Cocteau said too, that uh -huh. you, you shouldn't just be able to run up and embrace a work of art. Uh -huh. You should have to approach it from different directions, this kind of dance, until finally you fall madly in love with it. Uh -huh. And that, that was Cocteau's way of... All right, so the next slide, um, this is the work that's going to New York. Uh, this is one of the rudders. It's about two or three feet high, and uh -huh. the rudders are actually upside down. You know, not, not like the rudder would be going through uh -huh. the water, but like you're sailing a boat upside down through the sky. And this one's called Venezia, and it incorporates um, the... Uh, sort of like the water image. Okay, maybe I should go on the next slide. Okay. Uh, this is another rudder called Boys. It has an obituary for Joseph Boys on it. Oh, the artist has passed away right. uh, last December. Well, that's a beautiful piece. And the next slide is called Lee's Keys uh -huh. for another artist who was a major assemblage artist, Lee Bonacue, uh, New York artist. Uh, and like th this is getting back, in other words, I have a range between very simple, almost like a dartboard, uh -huh. and then what I call a tossed salad approach. Mm -hmm. to uh, and the next slide, please, is called George Handel's Harp Concerto. <laughs> very, very musical piece. And I didn't even need to tell you. You oh, yeah. recognize I recognize it. the harp. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> and the next slide is a uh, piece going to New York called Barbecue. And this is just two found objects that Wilder and I found in the alley behind the Mexican restaurant we go uh -huh. to, the barbecue and that other strange car, uh, curly sphere. Okay, is there something inside the barbecue too? Not yet, Not because yet? this had to be packed and shipped. Uh -huh. And so between now and when the show opens, I hope to, under the guidance of uh, David Lynch's eraser head mentality, uh -huh. do a couple little uh, goodies that go in there. That's good. Uh, or maybe on the shelf below. I measured it before uh -huh. it went off to be shipped, so I have those measurements. Is there like, when you like shipping stuff, is there always like a real nervous time, especially with your work? Oh, especially for the shippers. Yeah. Yeah. The shippers? Should, yeah, because these things uh, have to be treated like Tiffany lampshades. Yeah. And yet they're junk. Yeah. You know, it's a real rough. Do they stamp like fragile over the whole Well, piece? no, they just stamp on them, period. They yeah, jump up and down on them. Them. Yeah, and try and smash them. Okay. Maybe, okay, let's go to the next slide. Okay. Um, and this is a slide called Ramazzati, and again, it's those Italian posters which I brought back from Rome, and I'm now incorporating them uh -huh. into, into works. And yes, so beautiful. I'm oh, sorry, they're so beautiful. Like I love posters when you're like ripped from like uh, yeah. billboards, and you know, yeah. they sort of like see the half of the face. Yeah, that's a natural. You see that all through Europe a lot. Right. And then the next slide is called the Wow Box. Uh, wow. Wilfred O. White is for. Um, Who is? Who knows, you know, but it's a beautiful little object. And the next slide, uh, which is the last one, is called the Mother's Group. Uh huh. And I think it's self explanatory. Oh, yeah, the bike and the mom. Right, yeah, they all get together. So In great. fact, uh, you know, you notice the ground that that's on uh -huh. is the newsprint. Yeah. Um, that's w how I start now. I put faded newsprint on mm -hmm. things, and I made you a souvenir. Which th that's the last of the slides, uh -huh. but I'd like to show you a real piece now. Okay, great. Okay, great. terrific. Um, this is all, 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 this some yeah. of those pieces are going to New York. Yeah, these are going to New York. Uh -huh. This is one that didn't. This is the back of it, Taj. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so for having me on your show. Oh my gosh. I'd like to present you with some time because I know you don't have any. You know my time. Are you is running out? Here? Time is always that. Well, thank you very much. Okay. Can this be shown? There it is, tea with Taj. Tea with Taj. Great, yeah, George. It's, it's good tea. It's good tea. And I made it specially for yeah. this uh, interview. I appreciate it. It's well, what I, okay, what I, what, the next question I have is, um, is how, how do you, um, do you feel, like when you like sell a piece, you do sell pieces. Yes. 
Um, do you feel uh, you still own them in a sense, like after they're gone, or do you f do you feel funny like going places? Uh, well, no, that's what this love stamp does. They're going out like you skip a rock over the ocean, uh -huh. and wherever it lands, let's hope people are happy. Uh -huh. uh, and so people are taking care of these things for me, uh -huh. and I'm very pleased when I can go see them. Huh. But I don't really feel that they're, uh, you know, that I have this moral link like uh -huh. the French have. Uh -huh. I'm still interested. Oh, okay. Well, another question. You do a lot of performances. Yes. Now, how do you see that different than, say, like assemblage? Or do you see this sort of uh, 3D version of assemblage, which is assemblage sort of 3D anyway? Well, it's come to the American scenario. Oh, it's come to the American scenario. It's interesting to see it because you're going to be able to make a fight. Because you're going to be able And it's more swat to be able to make a fight. And it's going to run. Da! Woo! No matter what. Like that? That's good, yeah. That's it's amazing. It's like this, man. It's in the real flesh, you know? These are inanimate objects yes. that I'm dealing with. Yes. And with performance, all of a sudden, there you are, live people again. Well, <laughs> terrific performance, I might add. All right. Terrific. Okay. Well, I'd like to say, uh, we're almost at the end. Is there anything you might want to add or, you know? Uh, yeah. I'd like, I'd like to add two and two and come up with two more. Well, that's equals uh, 12 or 13 or something like that. I think that's a perfect ending uh -huh. to uh, bring your, uh, The last thing that I'd like to present you with, uh -huh. since you have the clock, uh -huh. you have the time, now I'd like to give you the space. Well, can you give me some space? How much space would you like? I've got a chunk of freeway that I'll sell you cheap, Tosh. Really? Yeah, it'll fit right in. Uh, <coughs> sign, sign your life away with this. My life? Mm -hmm. Sure, yeah. I'd be glad to. All right. And could I have your notes? Sure, please. To complete this please. transaction? Oh, yeah. May you like to ask me a question, for instance? Yeah, how did you come to this? I mean, I'm glad that you're not in street crime <coughs> anymore. That street hoolum stuff, I'm glad you're out of that. I was like, you know, I was doing nothing. And yeah. I just had to, uh, you know, I was just approached to do something like this. Was the tea always this strong? It was really strong. Oh, yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah, well, I was like in the tea business, and that was the end of the show. Uh -huh. so I, oh, I, I'm sorry, I might say this is the end of the show. And I'd like to thank you very much, Mr. Herms. It's a pleasure. And, uh, Good luck in New York, and you're having a show in Philadelphia too, I believe. That's right. And go see the shop ex uh, exhibit if it's there. Okay. okay. And uh, thank you very much, audience. And this was Tea with Tosh. <laughs>